Happy 40th birthday, Pac-Man! Hope you enjoy your vacation down to the volcano! To celebrate, let's, per let's have some, uh... Oh wait, it's not on this level yet. Not yet, but his candle and his birthday cake we, mi we mixed up with Mount Vesuvius. Yeah, it's like... Oh, there it is. Uh... uh so, Pac-Man, we couldn't afford uh, any Pac-Man-related shit for your 40th anniversary budget, so uh, we brought in Dig Dug. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. Yep, they brought back the Pookas, only this time, instead of being Pac-Man's best friend in the whole wide <gasps> world, they're his Oop. mortal enemy. And they pretty what? much they try to hurt you the, what, the same way you'd expect, by blowing up. When were they ever friends? Well, they were his friend... Well, in the first Pac-Man world, I know there was one Pooka character that was technically considered a friend to Pac-Man, but mm -hmm. you had to save him. And mm -hmm. in this game, they kind of forgot that was a thing, and then they just gave, they brought it, brought back the Pookas as many things that try to kill him. You know, uh, I, I feel like... Oh, go ahead, I Maybe the Pooka's just upset about what happened in Pac-Man World 1, and he blames Pac-Man for it. <laughs> I guess so. Maybe. They're just they're uh -huh. just they're just completely salty over the fact that Pac-Man was was too was so la was lax enough to let one of their brethren literally become robot food. They swore vengeance. I was gonna say I um nice. I was gonna say I uh, I do like the detail of that yes they do come from underground. As well as the dinos, who I always forget what their name is. Oh, the Figars. Yes. <laughs> and the, it's still fun to think that I only know their name. Their, na their names are Figars because of Pac Man World Rally, where they were a playable racer. Oh, huh. Huh. oh what the? Maze. And the Galaxian isn't Maze. even Pac Man. Yeah, it's going to space time. But yeah, yeah, we are recording this now in the year 2020, <laughs> the 40th anniversary of Pac Man. Look at yeah. all that molten melted cheese. Yeah, oh, Pac Man should be Pac Man should be cheese by now. Yet here we are. So that's right. So uh, we have, we as we mentioned, there's still that rumor going around of a possible. Oh God damn it! Oh, there's you know, still it's that too rumor. Bad. Go ahead. It's too bad you can't take cues from that. What's what was that one Pac-Man game where you can actually jump over the double name things? Oh, uh, Pac-Mania. Yeah, too bad you can't take cues from Pac-Mania and just jump over them. That would be nice. I gotcha. but, I mean, they're 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 pretty much treating this game to the to the absolute core. It's just a typical Pac-Man level or Pac-Man game where you just grab the dots, worry about the ghosts and whatnot. No oh, strings nice. attached. I mean, we're working with 2003 technology. There's only so much we can do for this game. I mean, honestly, yeah. it's funny because the very because the original Pac-Man world, uh, they had they had mazes too, but they had a little they had more gimmicks attached to them. Like it wasn't just the typical. Well, packed on mace flare. There was the there was also some the occasional obstacle like uh, crates that get in the way, geysers. Oh no! And uh, you even get to swim in the maze once at one, at one point. Why would you ever want to swim in a Pac-Man game? Because well, when Waka walking just isn't enough. So that he can subvert the trope that platform that platformer mascots can't swim. But platformer mascots can't swim. Not all of them. But Sonic can't swim. Mario's can swim. James, why'd you do this? Oh. Whether or not Mario's can breathe underwater is uh, subject to uh, context. I mean, yeah, there's that. Uh, I don't think Bomberman can swim. Although, I, I, well, he can swim, but only selectively. I think he could swim in Bomberman uh, 64, the oh, second Oh, that is so screwed up. Back. Oh, god damn it. Oh, I'm, trapped between a, I'm trapped between a, a rock and a rock. Just a oh. second ago, I had that exact same thought. The first time you used this teleporter, it was like, you know, because the way this is set up and how the camera is so limited to one side of the screen, you could totally teleport over there and be stuck. I was like, and sure enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, so if I remember happens, correctly, so hold on. Now, if I remember correctly, if you fail the maze, you actually lose the galaxy and you collected? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. That's and there's no and you only get, get one chance and... per stage. Oh. Only one chance per stage, and, Frogger. uh... Hello, what's this what random plant thing doing here? Ew. I think what's it doing? doing? I think what's supposed to be doing is that it's supposed to eat the other pukas and then launch them back at you, but then again, oh. that's like the all I think that's the only mm. plant monster in the entire game, so... I'm so what's the point? Tell. Oh, I can all... <laughs> oh, go ahead. I think... I mean, considering the fact that this game actually had quite a bit of stuff that was scrapped during the development stages, I wouldn't be surprised if that was just an enemy that they, did, that they just... I don't know, they forgot to eliminate. Fun fact. I was watching uh, Simple Flips. He and his friends were doing. They were. They like. They like to do these. Uh, it's something I've always. It's something I've always considered us trying one day with like. <gasps> writers, but oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, the, the narrow. The narrow. The narrow road. The narrow can... walkways. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing that Pac-Man's grab game is is as stellar as ever. Otherwise, yes, I would agree that is a bullshit part. 
Yeah. Unless you're childhood icky man, which could not use those, <laughs> which could not grab onto icky ledges. Man. Icky man. But no, what I was saying is, do those ghosts have? Wait, those ghosts? Oh, okay. They're, okay, they're le oh, they're mouths. Okay. They're tiki's. I thought there was something else. Moving on. Actually, um, um, if you don't I, I mind just, humor me, yeah. I'm sorry. If you don't mind humor me a bit, us talking about icky man just makes me think of a robot master that can like spit out and control goo. Ew. Mm. No, Icky Man, Icky Man, Icky Man would literally ju just be made out of rubber. Oh yeah, no, to we say, have like, to follow. No, he'd be made say, of apple. I was mm -hmm. about to say, I, I say goo because like a lot of your original characters are like goo characters, aren't they? No. Oh. Huh. Oh well. <laughs> I thought they were just elastic. But yeah, what I was saying is, um, I um. Also, I hate those things. I hate those things over there. On the are those platform. things again? They're just uh, they're just magma monkey magma gorillas as far as I'm concerned. You magma monkey. You can't kill them unless you're unless you're made unless you're metal pack man. Well, that fire is crazy. Because then you'd be heavy enough to crush their skulls and. But yeah, it was simple flips. They they had this cool thing where they they do blind <laughs> races. Also, who loves geysers? I don't. It's where the idea is that they would play a game blindly and race to see who could beat the game fastest, without knowing anything about the game beforehand. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know. I feel like maybe we should try that one time. Like try a game we've never played before and see which one of us can beat it fastest. Mm. Mm. We played question. so many games. I mean, yeah, we're. Uh, I mean, we pretty well, we're literally oh. video game gloss. I nice say. Like, I would say a good half, a good majority of us here here on the channel are vi literal video game glossaries. So. So it's hard. So I think it'd be hard to find a game that like none of us have. It would probably have to be a fun. game that that's, that hasn't been released yet. Like I don't know, freaking Animal Crossing New Horizons. No, that's speed speed, that's speed that's running, so speed running <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> speed running <laughs> Animal Crossing in general. I don't like. One hundred percent, all furniture items, all oh, debt repaid. God no! Uh, all debt repaid. Now I ha I have seen an all debt repaid run. They do do those kind of runs, but I don't how long see does how... it take? Like in game days, guys. Do they use cheat codes? Uh, probably. It's I, I know. First off, it depends on like what kind of randomized. I don't know it's a lot of random. Okay, anyway, because I but remember because the... I remember back when I had Animal Crossing, that was literally the only way I was able to fully pay off my debt was literally using all those bell codes. Oh yeah, but no, no. Okay, on to the actual reason why I brought him up in the first place was I was watching Simple Flips and he was playing uh, Pac-Man World Three. Oh yeah, and that one. And my goodness, I didn't know that Pac-Man tried to be Ratchet and Clank. Oh uh, no. In the well, not entirely, because technically the he doesn't have. environments totally look like Ratchet and Clank. I mean, in some regard, I mean, honestly, considering how, the way he talks, like I, I swear the script writing is very somewhat Ratchet and Clank as only with half the effort. But, but, like, um, the final mm. boss at that place, the weird scientist... It, it seemed very out of context for him. Like, I'll just say this much about Pac-Man World 3, because we will do a look at it eventually. I think Pac-Man being able to talk in that game is, like, the least of that game's problems. No, no. I don't although, like that. Although, I mean, he although talks Simple the Flips, Although Simple Flips did turn off the character voices soon Aww. into the game. That's a shame. Because, I mean, I, I mean, again, I, I don't mind Pac-Man talking in that game. I mean, hell, I'd say his personality is fairly on point to what I expect out of Pac-Man, but... Yeah, it's all space themed, and I mean, I, feel, I just feel like it's, it's just full of uh, of um, unfulfilled potential. In fact, speaking of which, I just remembered an interesting little factoid about um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pac Man World Three that I was actually wanted to I actually wanted to bring up earlier. What's that? Um, so before we had Pac Man World Three, there was a, oh, Namco had a particular project in development called Pac Man Adventures, uh -huh. and the funny thing about that game is that. I'm convinced it was essentially a prototype to Pac-Man World 3, because it has the same typical thing of Pac-Man being warped to a dystopian sort of setting with weird monsters and whatnot. You want to guess one of the main, the main people, the main um, art artistic drives they tried to hire for that project? Who? Huh. Don Bluth. Ooh. Huh. And he actually does it. And you can and you can actually find um, some concept art for the game that um, him and his crew did draw out of like some of the monsters that Pac-Man meets up. Uh, actually, Pac-Man himself actually had a reference sheet of some of the expressions he had, namely of being angry. So you this reminds. So so the be the most I can think of is, I could see I could see a Don Bluth art style working kind of like remember that game we did where it was basically Hey You Pikachu but with Pac-Man. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Pac-Man Two: The New Adventures, or Hello Pac-Man, as it should have been called. Yeah, actually, I, yeah. I could see it working in that kind of style. Honestly, like, oh, right, I... 
I'd have to look at the art myself, but just the description, the idea of Dom Luth drawing Pac-Man, I get in mind, like, just take his design from the Hanna-Barbera cartoon, but have it more fleshed and fleshed out, cleaner looking, and with the obvious Bluthisms. I will say that the the, the drawing for Pac-Man in general isn't quite as extravagant, extravagant as you think. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just drawn by one of Blue's own, um... Uh, one teammate. It's not so much the man himself. But, I mean, whenever you guys have the time, look up concept art for it on Google. It's, honestly, it's fairly interesting. And, I mean, it's not the best stuff I'd expect, expect for the IP, but it's honestly more interesting than what we got out of Pac-Man World 3 in general. That's mm. fair. Got it. And, uh, honestly, yeah, there, and there you go. There's the... Logan just shared with us the uh, stuff with Pac-Man. Oh, oh, right. Be. This level terrifies yeah. me. I, I love this here. So, so first off, so it looks like the Ow. artist. I love how the I love one of the notes here. It says, "Here are a few suggestions for facial expressions when Pac-Man loses control." What? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> control? I'm what? sorry. I kind of zoned out while uh, during our Don Bluth tangent. Uh, no, no, no. It's okay. It's oh, what? this level terrifies me. Did you say this is this is literally the place where you? Start? This is where my enthusiasm for this game died. <laughs> oh, oh, poor guy. Not this, not this part of the stage. Granted, we'll get to that soon. Oh, okay. We will okay. get to that soon. I mean, yeah, all things considered, yeah. I don't think the volcano world in itself is terrible, but I can agree it's definitely where the game definitely amps up the difficulty. And I do think the boss for this level, this world, is absolute horseshit. Yeah, I I just saw the the, the reference sheet and. It looks nice in and of itself, but you are right, James. I, I would not have picked this to be Bluth. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Bluth and his team were just were just told to keep mostly true to his, to the sources they could. Mm -hmm. Which is fair. And I do appreciate Whoa. the sentiment of them trying to actually up like up like up Pac-Man's range of emotion because you know we usually see him as the happy idiot. This mm -hmm. level is really nerve-wracking the way it forces you to keep going. Oh wait, thank God we have a. I just realized this level this. is very, oh, oh. very oh. long. Yeah, it's not. The, it's not the longest level, I'd say, but it again, things are ramping up big time here. This level makes me upset. <laughs> we haven't even got to the. We haven't even got to the third level yet. Wait, this isn't so, the third level of the volcano stage. Oh, no, this is only the second level. Uh, yeah. Wait, uh, so would you? So would you say this volcano level is the longest lasting area we've been through yet? Currently, yes. Okay. okay, I think I'm getting my wires crossed because I remember this being. I remember one of the volcano stages being the end of you might my. Be, you might be thinking of the, of the uh, next level because I, I remember that one being a bit of a pain. Probably. It was like an eruption or oh, something. Oh yeah, then there, and then there's this. Th this the game expects you to do. Oh, <laughs> what the no. hell? Yeah, you no. have to. You, you have to run from a moving platform onto the actual ramp itself and hope that the collision doesn't mess you up. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. I honestly shimmy, shimmy, forget shimmy. if I actually played this stage. I, mean, I don't know how you could... Yeah, you said, I, you, were, you, said you, went to, you were in the volcano level. I so. know I was. It's just that I don't remember this part whatsoever. Oh. Maybe you yeah. just blocked it out of your memory because of everything Probably. Else that it's probably, probably the traumatization. <laughs> oh, not the <laughs> traumatization. Just one thing I will definitely say against Pac-Man World 2 is that, like... Some of the oh. Marvel, oh. Marvel games in this game are oh. fine, oh. but they kind of they there's no depth to them, so it kind of leads to some cheap shots like that. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it looks like it is impossible to get through this without being hit. At yeah, least once. Kind of, yeah. And I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll just say, and I'll say this right now: we haven't even got to the worst level in the game yet. We have. I just mean from what I've seen nope. so far. <laughs> Damn it, Clyde! No. That that yeah, was just great. something. You know, I'll still never understand to this day why Namco had this weird inconsistency problem with Blinky and Clyde. But uh, Clyde. So... Well, Clyde's right Ooh. here. But um, just the fact that well, we all know we all know we usually know the ghost by name and their by their name and their color. Like we all know that the blue one's inky, the pink one's pinky, and so on and so forth. But then mm -hmm. you got Blinky and Clyde, who which for all for like up until recently, Namco have never like. They never made it clear on which is which. Like there's, like there's. I mean, at one point, oh. I remember oh. they did name one of the ghosts Sue. Oh yeah, uh, the purple ghost. 
Because so there was Inky Bink, there Inky Blinky, Inky Pinky, Pinky Clyde Sue. There Inky and Pinky and the Brain. And then and then and then and then arrangement had Kinky. Uh, and then they wait, they what? kept repla they kept replacing the ghosts in a lot of the games. I mean, aside from the usual four, obviously. Because how the hell can you forget about the main four that just constantly get rear up pack pack rec packs rectum? And then there was a weird game, and then there was that weird one, Kinky. Kinky. What no, about they, Stinky? That's a, that, is, that is a canonical ghost name, Kinky. Well, I remember there was Stinky, who was also a crossover of the Casper franchise. <laughs> Wait, what? Right. Wrong, no, wrong, a... wrong, wrong ghost there, buddy. Stinky's but they're both Casper's ghosts. Three uncles. True. Explain you know, that. I'm just, I'm just explaining that to Hyper Quick is what Icky meant is Stinky's one of Casper's three Okay, well, ghosts. I knew... I, I, okay, I remember that much. I just thought he was talking about a completely different ghost made for that crossover. Oh, no, no, no. I, admittedly, I forgot that I forgot that one of the ghosts was named Stinky. I, I mean, I remember yeah. Fatso, who was... Um... Stinky and Stretch and Fatso. Who was voiced by the same guy who ended up who ended up playing Obelisk in most of our English? Oh yeah, stuff. Brad Garrett. Obelisk and what? In, 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 in the two D ast it's asterisk 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 versus the Vikings. Oh, I thought you were talking about Obelisk Tormentor. No. <laughs> although now, although maybe that's what Obelisk was a parody of. I don't know. I, I, know, I don't know. All I know is that uh, Brad Garrett actually made a pretty fun Obelisk. Ooh, Hercules the Grocer. <laughs> But yeah, that it. Yeah, oh. in the move in the oh. in that oh, nice. in that first movie, yeah, it was Brad Garrett. I know Stinky was voiced by the late great Joe Alasky, who did the voice of Daffy and Marvel the Martian and quite a few Looney Tunes stuff back in the oh, day, like was particularly Duck Dodgers. I yeah. usually know for Daffy. Oh jeez, yeah, we're getting Apple. risky now. Oh jeez. <gasps> no, it's this part right here. Oh, you this know this fucking part. part. How are you doing this so could... well, James? It just... I pay, I pay it's simple. I pay attention to the drop shadow. If there, at least I can see one. Oh wait. oh wait, no, never mind. I don't even see a drop shadow. I just play it, play it and get ye old faith. Oh, just... by the way, the lava is rising during the entire section. I'm just that good. I just make my own luck. It's usually the lava that screwed me over when I was younger. So yeah, um, we're about two, about one third, once half of the way done with the volcano levels, and we pretty much finished off our panic. I'm still panicking. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, stay tuned for the next part as we reach our magma opus. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Till next time, everybody. I'm so sick and tired of this damn game. That is not a magnificent climax.